we will be starting a new topic okay and that topic is more related to the health effects of the pollutants see if you recall we begin with a very three components you know like str source transport receptor and then we said the basic objective was to safeguard the receptor and and then decide as to what should be the source emissions could be allowed and how the transport mechanism and all. So, we have been so far studying the transport or not trans transport, but the transformation largely the atmospheric chemistry. Okay, now, we want to quickly and briefly, you know, but still capturing the important points of health effects. We are not the medical people, nor we want to be the medical experts, but we should understand what the doctor can talk and what the health effects really mean to us. Okay. So, if you recall <coughs> this is something which we had we have talked several times large particles, small particles PM 10, PM 2.5 and ultra fine particles. Okay. You will also see as the particle size decreases the impact or the implication in terms of health effects goes up for two reasons both physical reason as well as the chemical reason okay because you see when the particle becomes small okay its surface area becomes very large and surface area large is going to absorb or absorb lots of toxic compounds which may be the organic compounds the metals so as a result as you go the smaller the particle size then you have the problem and also you will see the smaller particles this and this will penetrate deeper in the lungs. Okay. So, while the smaller bigger particles will be stopped at the nasal entry or at the upper part of your respiratory system and then you sneeze and the body has n number of mechanisms because lung is such a vital uh, organ, but unfortunately the particles go very deep okay. these particles are not able to come out and it can cause serious problem. We will see how it happens. But you can see again from the health point of view there is a we looked at the formation point of view if you recall in the class, but here we say even from the health point of view the smaller particles are of a greater significance. Okay. If you look at the Indian conditions for example, okay. we will little bit focus on particulate matter more than the gaseous. You see here this is the little old picture that we have like of 1999, but things have not changed so much. You see when you talk about the SPM, so SPM is high it means by and large the PM 10 will be high, PM 2.5 will be high, the four different cities and this is what is about the annual standard as you see here about 160 or something, the pollution levels are way high. Okay. The gaseous are well still manageable, but the associated problems we will discuss little later, but the particulates are important to us. So, this lecture will devote more on to the particle health effects. Okay. Before I explain more, this is all established in the literature, but that we do not have to cover in this course is that it changes or not only changes, but increase the particulate pollution, okay. increase the mortality. Okay. It has been documented, researched, published and established if I can use that word. The people die, more people die in more area which is pollution area both in terms of the <coughs> annual as well as if there is a daily variability in the particulate pollution, the mortality people have shown the increase in mortality. So, is in the hospital admission, respiratory symptoms, moderate or the worse asthma status, you know like a person is asthmatic, it can trigger asthma, asthmatic attack. Okay. Change in the pulmonary function, pulmonary functions you can take as a the lung function, okay. days of work loss, efficiency goes down and things like that. So, these are the issues, the broader issues, but we, we need to get a little bit more specific and the target organ, the, 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 the main target organ for the air pollutants is lungs. Other things also happen, because, but largely it is the lungs and which is the very, very important this thing. So, these are the nasal cavity you have and this is what is the larynx you have you have carina, this is the lungs, this is the diaphragm which is like a pump which kind of pushes back and forth your lung this thing and then this is 
uh, this is a trachea and then you, it's not being shown but the left hand side there will be bronchi, left bronchi and the right bronchi and the other further breakdown and further classification as to what happens. That will become a little clear in the next picture but before that you can also see how the particles, what kind of particles would be stopped at what place. Okay. The larger particles you know like 7 to 11 micron they would be stopped somewhere here but once you come to the, the stage 2 these particles of you know like less than 10 they are likely to stay in at the, tra at the trachea level and this is stage 3 this is upper trachea and primary bronchial this is primary bronchial and then you have the secondary bronchial which could be left bronchial or the right bron bronchial and then you see this particle range which is coming about 2.1 to 3.3 .3. And the ultra fine particles you see it's going very very deep almost at the place where the actual oxygen transfer takes place and we'll show you a little picture of this thing as to how it looks like. Uh, we are with the light system as we have here. So if you see here if you take the lung portion bigger okay then this you can take as a bronchial okay this you're standing this will be the left bronchial. And then finally something which terminates into the smaller, you know, like this, this structure, this is called the terminal bronchi. So you, you can't read in the back, but this is like the terminal bronchi because after that there will be no more bronchi, okay. This is called the ter ter uh, terminal bronchi. And then you see at the end, what it ends is really like, it's called uh, sex, S-A-C-K-S, okay. And they are little, you can really see this like the bunch of grapes. Okay, and it provides a lot of surface area. Okay, and if you, you know, bring it a little bit, uh, look, try to look from inside, you see these are really filled by the air as you breathe. Okay, and these things have a lot of elasticity. Okay, a lot of elasticity. So as the <coughs> the lungs are filled with the air, as you can see, and this is basically this is a membrane. The other side has all your blood streams are there. Okay, which will carry the blood. So what happens? So if you have something like this, this is filled with air, and this side <coughs> are the approximately your your blood blood carrying, you know, um, uh, not the arteries but um, blood vessels. So here you have the oxygen and plus something pollutant or whatever. See the partial pressure of the oxygen is way high onto this side. So as a result and the partial pressure of CO2 is very high onto the side. So CO2 will exchange because they have and this is a membrane do not forget. This is a membrane. So your, your CO2 will transfer from the blood into the lungs and the oxygen from the lungs will go to the this side. So this goes on to this side. Okay. So this exchange takes place. So we are talking about these things. And then you can see the fine particles which can come here, which in fact they do come. Okay. The kind of path which they go through, the treacherous path, okay, it is very unlikely that once they get deposited, okay, because and then they there is no mechanism through which they can be taken out. They will stay there for quite some time. Okay, or they stay there in fact permanently because the upper part, okay, you sneeze and all and all the dirt from here will come out. There is also body as a mechanism to clean the things from even from this region. Okay, we will see it how it does. But then if things go deeper, okay, and get deposited, okay, they will be damaging the tissues here and once these tissues are damaged almost there is no possibility of recovering the things. One is the aging process people suffer and then somehow what really happens when tissues are dead it loses its elasticity and once it loses its elasticity it is kind of you know like it cannot, cannot maintain the partial pressure. So the, the, the exchange of both oxygen as well as the CO2 is affected. So both happens because of the pollution as well as the aging process. So you can see if the person is old and he is in polluted area, see as it is he because of the aging process he has a difficulty and then exposed to the higher pollution level. So you can see how it 
kind of cause the problem. So, older people will have the, the problem and there is no way these can be regenerated. But fortunately in the body these are millions of sex, okay. sex are like a pocket. Okay. So, millions and billions of sex are there, but then they get damaged. Okay. But if the particle which is not deposited somehow, there is also the possibility that that particle can go back because we are talking very fine particles with almost insignificant inertia. Okay. So, this is what is the, we are not the doctors, we are not going into deep things, but still we should know about these things. Okay. Like let us look at the upper respiratory part of the lung, not at the, at the end, but at the upper part. You see here, this is the, uh, it is the, 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 the it flow, flows through this one, the air. It has a little hairy structure, okay. See here, hairy structure. If you take the, the blow up picture of this one, it looks like this, okay. And this hairy thing is called cilia, okay. And in addition to the cilia, there is a mucus, which is called mucus layer. There is a mucus, okay, which sometimes you sneeze, that is basically mucus that is coming out. That is also secreted, okay, that is there. And this and the particles will, because it's a wet surface, so it is on the upper part. Lower part, if you have the uh, at the at this point, if you have the wet surface, I think the person will die. Okay, so that's where we know we just want the gases there. But in the upper part, we have the mucus and mucus layer and uh, the body. The moment the particles are there, more mucus is released. And the cilia, as you see them, they are constantly like waving in the lungs. Okay, and once they are waving, so the particles comes and then it kind of really pushing them little up okay and once it push them up okay you have little cilia here the upper part then the lower part is somewhere here so in fact this mucus layer okay where the particles will be trapped it this this travels against the gravity So, cilia is cleaning the things and what are the particles that are trapped which are the little large particle 3 micron or so, they will be traveling along with the mucus, okay. same on the, the right side okay. and then this is your food pipe, okay. bad drawing but well and then this will almost all the dirt. Okay. It will reach up to here, okay, and then you swallow the things. So all the dirt, which is was affecting the lungs, go back into your food pipe. These things, okay. So this, uh, this in fact, this mechanism, it called mucose spelling. You have to check. Mucosillary elevator actually. It is like a lift if you like it. So, it is like a lift which kind of is lifting the things against the gravity. See the body mechanism and all the particles which are there. So, the upper particles uh, in the upper uh, part of the lungs things can be taken care of, but we go to the deeper part. I mean, these mechanisms are not so good. So, the small particles are of great significance. Okay. There is a little you will need little understand some terminologies and do not worry I will pass on these things to you, you can have a look out of this one. This is suppose on this side, okay, I am plotting the percentage of the total lung capacity okay, from 0 to 100 okay. and as you normally breathe, okay, normal at rest you are breathing, this is how you are breathing in, out, in, out, in, out. Okay. Suppose if I ask you, Okay, that well take as much breath as you can. Okay, okay. This is what is it now? This person is asked to take a deep breath, and he can almost fill all his lungs through the entire air that he can. Okay, then I ask him to please exhale as much as you can. Okay, okay. so this capacity, okay, is called the vital capacity. Okay. No matter how much he tries, this amount of the air 
or this volume of the air he cannot exhale. So that is called as a residual volume. Okay. That kind of volume is always present in the lungs. Okay. So this thing, okay, the the, um, the total capacity minus the residual capacity is called the vital capacity. Why vital? It is vital because from the operational point of view, this is vital. This is not. We can't use so much about this one. So this is what we call as the vital capacity. Okay. And then again, this is this I can transfer in the volume units basically. Okay. So this is what is measured in the volume. So I don't think I have the numbers here, but how do we write here? This is a little higher. Okay. This was pointed out by by the doctors to me. This is generally the male will have about 5000 ml. This is really, really high. The 5000 ml, okay, and females will be have about 3500 or so, okay. So you can see that uh, that is a, your total lung capacity, okay. This is also the uh, taken as a vital capacity that is in there. So now what, what the, and this which is a normal capacity what you are taking the volume in and out, that is called the tidal volume. Why? Because it is a tidal process that you go up and down, up and down. Okay, and now you see here. Suppose from this point, okay, this point. Okay, you have to little be careful here. That from this point, okay, if I ask person, okay, to exhale out, okay, as much air as as is possible, okay. So basically, from here, so it means this point is same as this one, okay. I ask him to exhale. Okay, maximum that he can exhale is uh, because I mean, uh, let's see. Okay, we are here. Okay, and maximum uh, as a normal normal operation, maximum that he can exhale is this volume, right? From the normal operation, that is called expiratory because you are expiring expiratory reserve volume. Okay. So it means what really it indicates is suppose you are feeling very suff suff suffocated and something polluted air has gone. So how quickly and how much you can exhale out? So that is called the expiratory from your normal level that you have expired. So this is a, this is the level. Okay. Inspired one, inspiratory from normally normal I have taken, and then again I want to take. So this is normal. See this is. And then go beyond that. That is called the inspiratory reserve volume. Okay, this volume is also very very important. And that again, lung capacity and something. Suppose you want to go uh, in a smoky area and still want to do something. You are, you are in. You little see the smoke and you want to go and put off the stove somewhere. Okay, then what you will do if you have good inspiratory volume? Then go there. Don't inhale or exhale. Store reserve it because this is a reserve volume. Okay. And then quickly do what you want to do and come back. Okay. This is what we call the inspiratory reserve volume, and this is what is the functional residual capacity. The normal this kind of residual capacity. There. But don't think that this is a dead space. Okay. This is also like it's always exchange. But this is what you will have always in the story. Like something is a water water pitcher is there. You are constantly maintaining some that water will always be there. But that water is being exchanged because if it is a dead volume. Then you can be lots of problems, okay. But it can become dead volume if you are if you lose the elasticity of your lungs. Then then they are not functioning. That volume is sitting there, and then the person can be in the trouble, okay. So there are little things we need to know, okay. And uh, this is well, of course this figure was taken from the Indian Asthma Care Society. So uh, these numbers we will try to or these terminologies we will understand, okay. So let's do one more thing, and uh, okay, this is something very important. Okay, I'll I'll give you the copy of this one. Um, this is the test the people do, or the doctors, or the physicians, or chest specialists will do on something called spirometry. Okay, so in spirometry, <coughs> what they are plotting here is you see here, this is the uh, you can say. Um, the time, and here they are exp exp expiring the air. Suppose for the timing, just forget. I take a deep air, 
okay and then I'm expi I'm asked to expire as quickly as I can you know like so this this is the normal uh, let's say this is let's f just for the moment forget about this one I'll you, you imagine that we are thinking we are talking about this curve from starting from this point I take the deep air and now I'll start okay then I say So what will happen? I'll have the peak expiratory flow rate at some point, and then my the amount of the air that I'm then I'm I'm able to exhale out with particular with time will reduce, and there'll be one peak. <laughs> so that peak and afterwards it reduces. Okay, okay, and then again I'll take. So this is cycle of inspiration, okay, and this is deep inspiration, and you are trying to exhale as much as you can. So now this is called flow volume loop. Okay, so this flow rate at different time. This is of the great significance to the to see the doctors and also see the effect of the air pollutants. Okay, what you see here, this is don't forget this is the flow rate in liters per second. So the first number which we are we are calling it, we are calling it as PEFR, peak exploratory exploratory flow rate. Okay. This is a very good indicator of the person who is having asthma. Okay, and PFR. The moment you go into the polluted area, your PFR will reduce. Okay, that is that is again established. And once you have this thing, then you have a little. Then you this is reduced. Then you you need to exhale and inhale very quickly. So you feel very uncomfortable. The point number two, okay, is the is the flow rate okay when the 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 25 percent of the total vital capacity of the air has been exhaled out at that point okay so that f e f 25 percent this is the point number two okay I again repeat that this is the flow rate don't forget we are just talking about the flow rate at the point when 25 percent of the volume or the vital capacity has been exhaled out okay this is the point where the 50 percent is exhaled out this is the point where 75 percent of the air is or the vital capacity is, is exhaled out and this we are giving the number 12 but does not matter finally when you have exhaled out everything okay that is your vital capacity you recall that everything was exhaled out so that is called the vital capacity this is very very important okay suppose what I have plotted here is FEVR uh, FEVR with time. So the, you see here the amount of FEVR is changing with time. So suppose if I integrate FER forced expiratory rate and which is function of time right as I show you. So this is function of time. What will this give me? At different times, it will give me the volume of the air that has been exhaled out, flow rate times dt. Okay. So I can put this as, and this will give me uh, volume, or, or I can call it F E V, not R, which is function of time. This is the volume, simple integration. Okay, this is also a very very important parameter, force expirated volume. Okay, suppose when t equals to one second, this number F V V we call this as F E V one. Okay, F E V one is the amount of air okay or the volume of the air if not amount expired okay in one second in this pyrometry operation not the normal not during the tidal thing okay but I when I am running through this pyrometry so this kind of graph which we are trying to which we are trying to show here has essentially been plotted here that is called volume time curve okay that is what we call as a volume time curve. So the same thing what I am telling you 
is also the machine or the equipment which you are using will produce this kind of graph for you. Okay. So here now I am having the units as time and the volume. You are measuring the volume onto the side okay, and the time. And basically what you are really doing is you have this function which you are integrating. Right. So if I have to find out what is my F V V 1, F E V 1, so I should go at 1 second, okay, plot this one and look at this one. Right, clear? No problem with that. So I can also find out the other parameters like F V 1, F V 2, F V 0.75, but from this thing is an important parameter. I will show you how to assess air pollution effects on lungs. One of the important things, there are many other things which people do, so that you can see here. And you can, this is the 11, that is FV3 if you see here 11, and then if you go here, this is also. F V 3, this in 3 seconds, how much are the volume, okay. And finally, the, the last thing, because in a, you, the whole operation is over in about 5 seconds or so, this is the last total volume that you will expire, that will be force vital capacity. But from the air pollution point of view and the doctors have lots of meaning of this one is that you have the two parameters which are important, F E V 1, okay, that is the amount of the volume which is expired in 1 second and the force vital capacity that decides as to what the conditions of the lungs are generally from the air pollution point of view. So that you should understand. Uh, do not worry, I will pass on everything and the third thing of course is the PEFR. Okay. These three things are, these other things are from the medical point of view, they have a lot of analysis they do with this one and in children things are a little different and things like that. But from the air pollution point of view, these three things are good indicator of the air pollution. Okay. This is what is the machine. This is generally used for the peak exploratory flow rate, very simple ordinary machine. Okay. No moving parts, no motor, nothing is required. But the spirometry is little complicated thing actually. So this will require you know that you attach a computer and things like that. So what we might do right now is before or maybe I should go one step further before we go. What is their significance when it comes to the air pollution? Peak expiratory flow rate that we define F E 1 is the force expiratory volume in one second, force vital capacity. What is the importance of the PFR? PFR is an indicator also to some extent about the asthma. Troublesome breathing due to inflammation and the constriction airways. Okay. Your airways are kind of constricted. You, if I take the section of the airways here, okay, which looks like this, but somehow they are constricted. Okay, that shows the exp, uh, this thing. So this PFR value it depends on to a person, his male, female, body weight, height, and the the ethnic origin, for example. So for those people, as you are from North India, it could be different, from South India it could be different. And so these PFR values, then for, for healthy people it is defined, okay, which is there all software, it tells you that what should be the value, what a kind of person you are. So when we do the spirometry, we also need to, in addition, we do the weight and height and they will ask you the age of course and the sex and they will also ask you which part of the country you come from or which part of the world you can come from. So for that, they will have a standard value. If the value what you, you come up with, suppose it is less than 80 percent of the value which you should have, it means you are likely to be having the asthma or the problem is about to begin. Okay. And lower value suggests the aggravation of the asthma and things like that. Okay. And asthma is not quite an air pollution problem, but it can, once you, are, you suffer from asthma, it can trigger uh, if you are exposed suddenly to a large air pollution area. Okay, there's some data which we didn't want to show in the beginning, which percentage change in the mortality. Okay, I mean this is normally this is the zero is the normal death rate people will die and things like that. But what is the change because of the uh, particulate matter pollution? 
it is um, some of the acute exposure studies percentage change of 10 micron per meter cube of the PM10. Okay, this is some study by the Pop and Dockery. So that's a okay mortality change could be so much, morbidity change could be so much. So it could be symptoms that you can say reduction. This will be the reduction percentage change. Okay, this will be reduction in Fe1 could be so much, reduction in PFR could be so much. You see the differences that you see. So these are indicator of their depression, and you should have some idea. If not, you know, like not like to the idea that the, the doctors need to have. Okay. And I want to define two things to you: restrictive lung disease and obstructive lung disease. Okay. <coughs> the unable to get the air out that is called is obstruction. Okay. And most of the air pollution diseases are in the category of COPD. Okay. What COPD stands for? Chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases. Okay. And the indicator for them is that if the ratio of Fe1 to FeC, okay, both are what you both are in what units? Volume? Liter or the vol units are volume. So the ratio will be unitless. If this is less than 70 percent, okay, then which will be higher Fe1 or FeC? FEVC will be higher, this is a total force vital capacity and this is the amount of the air exhaled in one second. So that is much smaller than the total volume that is there. So if this becomes much smaller than 70 percent, then the person is suffering from COPD. And COPD are generally the, the, the obstructive diseases are more attributed to air pollution. And then and uh, immediately the person who is smoking, he will immediately show this one. Okay. So either you smoke cigarette or you will be in the polluted area uh, that COPD will quickly be seen. Lower the ratio versus the obstruction. The restricted diseases that is the problem to get the air out, get air in sorry. The low FVC, okay, the normal to uh, normal or ele elevated, then you look at the ratio FE1 to FVC, but then you are, what you are finding here is FVC is the lower, lower value and the low, low total lung capacity that is, that is there. So what I would like to do before I go on to something else is that uh, we uh, this little we have the instrument called spirometry. It's a very expensive instrument. The little thing is about 1.4 lakhs. Okay, and then of course we need to attach it to the computer and things like that. So what I will ask. Uh, okay, let me also show you this graph. It's very important. This is again taken from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. This is adjusted values. Okay. See, uh, for coronary heart diseases, this is the data from 1999. Okay. And this is the period from 1965 to 1919, the, the way these studies have been done. For this period, okay. many people die. I am not, not saying that people do not die because of the coronary heart disease, because generally the, the deaths, death rate or mortality. Is being is decreasing because of better health facilities and better education to the people, and that there is a decrease in the coronary heart disease. So is in the stroke, okay, and then uh, other vascular diseases. Well, it's kind of stable, but look at the COPD. Okay, it's not that the people have started suddenly. People have started more smoking, more cigarette, or more people have become, you know, like well, mm, they start smoking the cigarette, and or they are starting. Or people are or more people are starting and people are smoking more and more. No, that is not issue. So generally, this is what was the point. The point. So you see that how uh, important the. Uh, I'm not talking about number of deaths. <coughs> Don't misunderstand that I'm talking about the number of deaths. The cause of death is this, is this, this. You are saying the increase, okay, compared from 1965 to 1980. So there's COPD is at rise. So this largely this can be attributed largely either to smoking or to the air pollution issues. So this is on the rise. Okay. Okay. So what we want to do is hopefully we should be able to demonstrate to you the, the spirometry test because that's so that you can really get a feel of this one. So either you volunteer this all you know disinfected and this is a brand new thing. We want to try someone just try and but don't try if you are a smoker, <laughs> then you will be a little disappointed and things like that. 
they want to, somebody wants to try, it's, it's a normal thing, you know, like. Do you want to try? Come. It's absolutely, uh, actually this is a little, for the children we cannot do it because children, they don't cooperate so much. So, <coughs> what you have to do is uh, normal operation and take the breath as much as you can and forcefully as much as you can force it out, okay. But we have to have the, the Naresh, we should have the software for this one, isn't it? So, okay, what do I do? It's not my computer, so I have a little difficulty. So, you have, the, you have to open this. So, you give all the, the inputs in terms of the various things, um, some of the name of the person. Then you put the, is from North India. And then, you know, of course, the date and time, year, height, weight. And then you can also give the smoker or non-smoker and things like that. And then, uh, that we all set. So, uh, normal operation. And then forcefully and go to the last moment you can exhale out everything because you want to go to the last level of the residual volume that you may have. Try. First normal, like you know, I'll do it there. Okay. And then doctors also, what they will do is that they will put the, the drug, they will do before the drug and after the drug and see the improvement. But now you, you, you try. I think maybe, maybe you want to hold it like this, okay. okay sir. You have to put it inside, okay, sir. This, this one. It has to be all the way like this. Okay. And you can't put your finger here. So we we will start then. Second. Okay. I think you need to you need some training. Naresh, why don't you do it? That's much better. Let Naresh do one time, and then we can repeat the things. So. See how did how did this how this is really done? Wait, 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 wait. We normally put the little this thing here. Okay, it should not show there. Normal, ordinary thing. Then. So, this, this was, this was a little, uh, okay. See here, as you exhaled out, this is your uh, flow rate, as a liters per second, okay. And this flow volume curve is coming here. And then you see here, this is what you say, this is PEFR and at different time. And then you get the total capacity. And these uh, are the predicted value for him. Okay, this, 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 this. So obviously, has not performed so well uh, because he said that he's suffering from something. So normally, it should be like this for his uh, condition. So you can find out um, force vital capacity. Okay, F E one, F V V one percentage. Okay, and then uh, P F R. That's nine point six one. These are the. These are the. These are the predicted. It means for the person of his um, his age, his height, which I mentioned here, force vital cap should be 4.7, FE1 should be 3.96, FEV1 percentage or the total capacity should be like this, and PFR should be this. So these are the 25. That is the, after the 25 percent of the volume is exhaled out and 50 percent is exhaled out, and then you see here. Uh, he could only perform the 66 percent of his what he should be, that is the percentage this one, the only 79 percent of this one and this is uh, FEV1, okay, this is 119.3 uh, percentage, okay. And this is how you can find out and uh, in fact what this is done, 
this is done i mean uh, we have to get the best results so this for the same person has done twice or thrice and then out of three times whatever the best results are there that is taken so you can record the things and then you can see how the people are performing in terms of the what we as air pollution air pollution people we normally want to see this and this and pfr three things okay so especially in pfr uh, peak expiratory flow okay the, the performance was not 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 very good you see here what is expected was at some point somewhere here okay and uh, it performed here so this is only about 48 uh, 48 50% of the Suppose this is 6, so he should be there about here. Okay. So that is how you can really measure it. You can really see the things. Of course, normally this is done by the doctors, but the data or most of the time data are used and analyzed by the air pollution people. Okay. So this part we'll leave there because that's all I wanted to demonstrate to you. But we do this thing uh, three times, you know. So, and the best results are taken. Okay. So, I will show you some of the, uh, the work which was done. So, uh, so you, you can get the real feel and real numbers, you know, like. Master student, okay, uh, he went on to do the measurements of the pollution levels at three different <laughs> locations. Okay. okay, and he kind of involved some people for the measurements of spirometry at these three locations. Okay, and analyze the data. Three locations are Vikasnagar. This is Vikasnagar, IIT Kanpur, and Juhilal Colony here. Okay, so what he did was I've cut down many slides. He did the lots of measurement. Okay, for PM10 at different places. Okay, and also for PM2.5. Okay, that's important. So <clears throat> these are the IIT Kanpur was cleaner site. These are little uh, comparatively high pollution level as you can see here. Okay, and then lots lots of people were involved, and then the measurements. This PFR was done daily basis because it was very simple. Just you say okay, flow this thing, but the spirometry is a little complicated as you can see. Okay, and then uh, it takes a while before the spirometry. So the spirometry was done in various seasons. Okay, never conducted on each individual of the cohort with the spirometry G, this is the same equipment to observe the general trend F E 1, F E C and this was done daily. Okay. Okay. So based on PFR, the people in the Juhilal colony, this is the percentage of the population. This is, uh, it means 80, like let us say here the 90 percent or well let us say about 20 percent of the people their performance was as good as it should be. Okay. What you see here is the green zone is the observed PFR was above the 80 percent of the predicted. Predicted value means in this con concept predicted value is the, the normal value if you like. Okay. The normal performance based on age, height, sex. So that they performed, I mean in this, in for example the IIT Kanpur almost like up to 90 percent of the people, 90 percent of the cohort or the group they performed very well. Only there was something like about 15 percent, their performance was a little poor, between 15 to 80 percent of their actual value what it should be. Okay. But we, as we come to the polluted area in Juhilal Colony and Vikasnagar, <laughs> you see their performance, the people only about 65 percent or 70 percent people performed as per their, what they should really be performing. But if you go to the more polluted area in the city, only about 20, 20 percent of the people they could perform as per the expected value, many people were in the range 50 to 80 percent and there were almost some percentage which close to 10 percent people were in the red zone means they are performing even below 50 percent. Okay. So that is certainly that is taken as the person already suffering from asthma, likelihood of these people will with the pollution or whatever the reason they could be pushed to the uh, um, the red zone or, or the problematic zone. So you can clearly see as to how the, the pollution and they have the effect on PFR. But more than that was uh, the analysis was done for the changes in the delta PEF with respect to PM10 and PM2.5. Okay. 
So, how it was done was what was the average change in the performance of the people okay, as there was change in PM10. So, we will not go into so much detail, but I will show you the results if I can. See here <coughs> on 15 days at various sites they went. Okay. This was the cohort site uh, Vikasnagar, for example. And then what you are seeing here is the these are the your pollution levels. Every day they are measuring. Okay. And then pollution level are shown onto this site PM10. So sometimes it was 300, 200, 250, 300, 400, 450 or so. And then average change okay, in PFR of the people okay, is plotted on this site. And then as you see here, as the pollution level goes up, there is a drop in PFR. Okay. Delta PFR is negative, you can say. Okay. There was a drop here. Again, okay. uh, and the pollution level again goes up, and then you can see constantly there is a drop in there. Okay. And um, this was the PM 2.5. It was not so apparent for PM 2.5, but the other areas you will see. Okay. This is at the uh, Juhilal colony site. So, this is the pollution level increase, decrease, very high, and then decrease, then again high, and things like that. And you see the, the performance the lung function in terms of the PFR, a change in PFR. And this is average for all the people, it is not just one individual. One individual can perform anything. So, here you see it is clearly seen as the pollution level is going up, the performance is dropping for the people. As the pollution level goes up, the performance is dropping. And similarly, for PM 2.5 at Juhilal colony, that also is clearly seen. As the pollution level PM 2.5 goes up to like 150 or so, because the pollution level is high, and so the performance decreases. In fact, it becomes negative from the normal performance. Okay, and then as the pollution level drops, okay, which is close to about 60, the performance improves. So PFR is related even with the daily activities, you know, like you can improve and, and it can go down. So, this is what was clearly seen, but the, it, was, it was more related with PM10 than PM2.5, which was a little surprising, I mean. And uh, we should also show you the results from IIT, if we have. Okay. IIT performance, I mean, we did not, because the levels were so low <coughs> and the, the variation was also not so much. We did not see as clear trend as we did for the other two locations. So, IIT Kanpur, we could not see so much of you know the correlation. One is going up, the other is going down, and things like that. But um, okay, then what what the what the student did was that this delta PEF he correlated with respect to PM10, PM2.5, and with PM10 one day lag. Okay, they took the PF value for the next day and the PM10 value the one day before and then PM2.5 and they could see there was a correlation between uh, delta PEF and PM10, so a negative correlation. It means as the pollution level went up, the performance delta PEF that decreased okay, or the PEF that decreased. So, that was clear, but uh, more related with PM10 and you will see that PM10 and PM2.5 are expected to relate related. PM10 or uh, the previous day and the current day would be related, so will be PM 2.5 and PM 2.5 was highly related. <coughs> because PM 2.5 do not change so quickly as does the PM 10, so the correlation between PM 2.5 of the today and yesterday was, was very high and PM 10 and PM 2.5 also correlated and this were all significant statistically. So, you can say that clearly there is a fact of air pollution on to the PFR. This is a graphical presentation how the PM10 was changing okay. as it was increasing, the performance in terms, in terms of this thing was, was decreasing. So, uh, it was not so, not, so, not so significant about PM2.5. There was some you can fit a model to this and then you can say how things will change. There were 39 people with those were involved. And you can see how PM10 concentration and the and the um, uh, is basically the coefficient. Okay, that you can compare with. 
Okay, the other thing which you, I must show you is this one about the how the people performed in terms of the FEV1. Okay, what what the student did was all the people they were there about 30 people were there, so he plotted the you see the this the solid spots. Okay, solid spots is this is what they should actually <laughs> perform based on their body weight, based on their height, based on sex, and based on the which part of the country they come from. So this was this is what it should be, okay, for the person. And you see immediately below this, this is what the people performed, okay. So there is one to one correspondence for everything. Well, some people did perform better than what they should, I mean. But you see, in general, there is a likelihood because this area was polluted. In general, the people performed much below to their what their actual <laughs> performance in terms of F E 1 should be. Okay. So, the average deviation was about 0.3 liters which is quite high. I mean. Same thing was in the area of um, this of course, vital capacity of the lungs. So, that also you can see the solid thing is what that is what they that is what they should be. On purpose they are put you know in the increasing order. So, that the graph is seen very clearly. So, you can see here the people performing below their for example, this he should perform at this level, but he was performing at this level. For example, this person the number 20 let us say okay, should perform at this level, but maybe he was performing at this level. So, again we can find out the, the mean variation from the predicted values is again 0.42. It means most of the people are performing below what it should be and the average, average decrease in their the vital capacity is about 0.42 liters. Okay. The same thing was in Juhilal colony that was again polluted area, so that you can see the pe people performing below this thing and 0 0.31 here and again close to 0 0.4. Okay. And we also have the IIT data here. So, IIT also I mean in terms of FE 1, FEC, the people performed little below, but that performance was not as bad as it was in uh, the city. So, you can see here the mean deviation of 0 0.13. So, that was the deviation as you see here, because the graph is a little bit exploded. So, you see difference is more, but it is not that much difference as can because it is starting from 2 liters here. So, you can see here. So, as an FVC, this was about 0.27 liters or something. So, it was clearly you can establish that how the, uh, the, the pollution will affect the people, their lung performance and then associated lung diseases and things like that. And uh, there are many more things people do in this, this kind of study, but we need to cover this particulate matter and health effects just in one lecture, so that you can um, yeah, see here. Um, we will stop there and for some of the guesses we will talk in the next class. We need not to be expert of the health effects, but we should know. Okay. And then obviously, now we have this information, this information what where we use this information to set the ambient air quality standards, right. That is what we want to say, okay. We want to say, okay, the people need to at least we want to reduce this 0.13 to let us say a 0.13 to let us say 0 0.05, okay. Then what should be the improvement in the air quality? We can do with our studies and this well, all right. Let us set the standard at this level, okay. The problem was that people were insisting that we should do some studies of our own because we all the time are trying to borrow the data from somewhere else. They say, oh, well, Indian conditions are very different, the pollution levels are different. Somebody, there's two arguments. One, somebody says people are the nutrition level is so bad, so low for the people in India, so they, they, their likelihood of, you know, like uh, poor performance, lung performance will be high. The other argument was there, well, we are acclimatized to the poor conditions, so the body response will be better and body has acclimatized itself to perform better even under the worst conditions. So, there are lots of arguments and this and that. So, sometimes we took, we need to create and develop our own uh, medical tests and medical studies. Obviously, in this work uh, many of the medical people were involved and this was one of the master's thesis. The student did very good job. You will be surprised. This is what his thesis is and it is about 30 pages of thesis. Normally, we see the end text is to be very long and you know like but the work done was, was, was very good actually, it was published in some good international journal and things like that. Okay, we will stop there.